Hey guys, what's up? This is Brett. Welcome to the first Friday on the turntable of 2013 AD. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you guys had a great holiday season. Um, today is January 4th and uh, we're going to just get things started here. For those new to my channel, Friday on the turntable is where I take a look at a particular album. Uh, usually it's one that's uh, a, a really uh, big favorite of mine and I talk about it sometimes I do various features where I rank various artists uh, if you missed for uh, past ones I did David Bowie's uh, 1970s catalog I just recently did U2's entire discography and uh, the most recent Friday in the turntable was my best albums of 2012 list so if you missed that be sure to check it out I think it's probably the most recent one down on my channel and uh, thank you guys for all the feedback on that one. Uh, it was really fun putting that together and uh, seeing all your guys' uh, comments. So today I'm talking about a great legendary band from Memphis, and that is Big Star, and this is number one record. Iconic um, album cover design. Uh, this came out in 1972, April of 1972, out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, on Ardent Records, Ardent was also uh, is also a recording studio as well. And uh, this, I believe, that I'm holding in my hands is an original pressing I found this years ago in a dollar bin, actually, and I think it was much sooner than, uh, than it was reissued, so definitely I'm guessing this is a, uh, an original pressing. I'll show you the, uh, the label on this one. It's got the uh, Ardent Records label. So number one record. Pretty cocky to call your first album number one record, but uh, definitely was... Um, uh, funny because the album actually sold less than 10,000 copies. They had a lot of distribution problems uh, with Stax, who was their distributor. So not a lot of this record didn't make its way into many people's hands. But as they say, uh, like the first Velvet Underground album, uh, it, it sold very few copies. But everyone who bought it was started bands and was highly influenced about it uh, by it. And uh, you know, it's an album that just achieves legendary status and. You know, thousands and thousands of people cite it as just a, a masterpiece. So this was the first Big Star album. It uh, it preceded. Uh, it was preceded by. Um, the, well, the singer was Alex Chilton, and Alex Chilton. Uh, you see him there. The picture is kind of dark, but Alex Chilton was kind of a teen singer who was with a band called the Box Tops, and they were uh, toured with the Beach Boys, and and they had a huge number one uh, single called "The Letter," which I'm sure you've heard. And uh, he uh, got together with Chris Bell, and uh, and they started writing some songs. And then Jody Stevens was the drummer, and then Andy Hummel uh, was the bass player. Now this this lineup in this um, in this uh, for the for this album never appeared on a Big Star album ever again because after this album, uh, Chris Bell left, kind of uh, disenchanted by just the lack of success. So he went on and did his own thing. Uh, and then the, for the next album, Radio City, which I'll show you guys the other records here in a minute. Then the other three guys went on to make the second album. And then Andy Hummel left the band. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then by the time of the third album, just Jody Stevens and Alex Chilton were left and then the band dissolved. And the whole band lasted pretty much for just you know three, four years. So really, really um, short span now there's been a lot of great bands in music history that have just lasted just a really short time and when you think about some bands uh, like let's just say Metallica or someone and they take like five six years to put out a new album the time that these bands take to record their next album many great bands have existed like think of Joy Division they lasted from what 77 to 1980 I mean three years you think of what they achieved in three years compared to you know that's just like a high out just a recording break for most bands these days so pretty amazing so anyways getting back to number one record uh, some of you guys even if you're not familiar with Big Star you may recognize some of the songs because uh, there's a TV show which I've actually never seen before but I, I just know it but it's called that 70s show and uh, the song uh, In the Street, uh, which is the third track on side one, was actually used as a theme theme song for the show by two different artists. The, I think the first season it had a, one guy did a cover of it, and the second season Cheap Trick actually did a cover of In the Street, and that's the theme show. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen that and never knew it was probably a big star song. But um, this, uh, 
it's such a an interesting record because there's a lot of duality between the t uh, Alex Chilton's vocals, um, which are more kind of delicate. Uh, think of for those of you familiar with Elliot Smith. Um, Elliot Smith was was his voice. Sometimes I hear it. It just sounds like Alex Chilton to me. He was very influenced by that. And Chris Bell's vocals, which are more more pained and uh, just interesting. They kind of trade off singing on, on a lot of songs. And then the the bass player Andy. Hummel actually sings one track, the closing track on side uh, side one, which is the Indian song. So, um, if you never, if you if you only hear one big star song, and if you're gonna look at, if you're unfamiliar with them, and you're gonna look up and, and check out a song, check out the song called Thirteen. It is really one of the most beautiful, uh, amazing songs ever written. It's kind of a coming of age story, which will take you right back to your teenage years, and uh, just. Uh, um, just, just amazing, uh, 13, and as a matter of fact, Elliot Smith actually did a cover. It's been covered by a lot of people, but uh, I think even Garbage might have done a cover, but 13, just an incredible song. Um, what else did I want to say about this? Um, oh, the singles that were on this one, uh, which, which are kind of unusual because they're, prob they're not my favorite tracks. I, I love every song in the album, but the singles that were actually pulled for this were um, When My Baby's Beside Me, uh, which was sung by Alex Chilton, and the other single was Don't Lie to Me, which was uh, sung by Chris Bell. And they're pretty uh, hard to find singles because obviously the album was, was pretty scarce. Uh, the, uh, the singles were probably even more, more scarce on this one. So my favorite tracks on this one are definitely 13, as I just mentioned. The, the Ballad of El Goodo, which is the second tracks, incredible feel which is the the song that leads off the album sung by chris bell really kind of a powerhouse uh, beginning and my life is right which is also a uh, chris bell and just a just a phenomenal phenomenal song so this is number one record as i mentioned um let me just see if i have anything else i want to discuss on this one no so after number one record as i mentioned chris bell left left the band kind of wandered around traveled and so the rest of the band recorded or, uh, and released Radio City, which was their second album. Look at that back cover on there is just uh, incredible picture there. Nin this was 1974 and uh, some interesting things uh, going on in the poster on the wall there. But uh, this is also a phenomenal record. September Girls, I'm in Love with a Girl, Back of a Car. Oh my soul, just just phenomenal. So this was the second album, and like I said, Chris Bell was already gone. And then by the time they recorded, uh, they in 1974 they recorded the third album, which became t called Third or Sister Lovers, depending on on which edition people had. So they recorded without Andy Hummel. Then he left the band, so it was just Jody Stevens and Alex Chilton. And they recorded Third in 1974, and it kind of just got shelved. Some test pressings were sent out, and in it. That by that point the band kind of fizzled out. They never really played many live shows at all. I think, in in total, I think the original run of Big Stars I think just did a handful of live live shows. So in 1978, after their band was already dissolved, um, a record label actually released Third, and uh, and then since then it it was kind of reissued by various labels, all with kind of different track listings. So. If you got one release, the track listing had different songs on it, etc., etc. So, just a couple years ago, I was very excited when this happened because a couple years ago, oh, this is my CD version, which kind of has all the tracks from this session. This was put out on Ryko, so it, it's called Third Sister Lovers, and it actually has tw uh, 19 tracks on it. So it has kind of everything that was was uh, recorded and released during those sessions. But a couple years ago. Um, for Record Store Day, I think it was put out by Omnivore. Yeah, Omnivore Records in with Arden, and they put out an exact replica of the test pressings that were sent out. And there was only, I forgot how many copies of this were, maybe a thousand of these. And um, I was fortunate to get one, so they, they redid the, um, they redid the packaging for that, just like a, uh, a, a tape box, you know, in the, in the days when you recorded to, uh, to analog tape, you know, the tapes came in that one, and they put the track listings on the back. I mean, 
if you're a big star fan definitely seek this out i think they even did another edition of this as well but i'll show you what this what this looks like in the inside because it's just uh it's just excellent so it opens up just like a tape box and then uh you have just white label just a white label uh promo there and then it has this pouch which is just I mean, man, this is just like, for, for musicians, this is just killer to see this. Uh, when you record it on tape, you would make these little track logs of what was on every, every track, and they were recording a 16 track back then. And for those of you non-musicians, when, when albums are made, everyone just doesn't record at once. Well, you know, sometimes they do, but you would multi-track where you would record the drums on, or, you know, the bass on one track, guitars on, on several tracks, vocals on several tracks, and each drum would be on its own track, depending on how many tracks are available. So this shows actually for the song Nighttime, yeah, on track two was the violin and the cello, and track three was the violin and viola, the vocals. So I'll just kind of show you that. So they actually included that for every song from the session which is just really cool and in addition to that in the little pouch here was also the the lead sheets for every song from the album so it had the chord progressions with the melodies and these were things you know that bands would send it also for copyrights and for publishing and stuff so yeah so it has the chord charts for all the songs and the melody transcribed with the lyrics so i mean what what great packaging i mean for a for a set to come out um you know that's the kind of extras that are just really really great to have so that was the that was the third album like i said by the time that when that came out originally the band was already already dissolved um, sadly, Chris Bell actually, um, well, in actuality, the only member of the band left now that's, that's still, um, still alive is Jody Stevens, the drummer. Uh, Chris Bell was the first to pass away. He died in a car accident. I think it was in 1978, and uh, he was working at the time at his parents' restaurant, and he drove his car and off the road, and, and he died. And then um, just in the last couple of years, the same year actually, Alex Chilton died, and then uh, Andy Hummel also died. So, so the only member left is Jody Stevens. Now the band reunited in the early 90s, I think it was in 1993, with the drummer Jody Stevens and with Alex Chilton. And the two guys from the band, the Posies, the Seattle band, actually filled in on bass and vocals, and they recorded a new uh, an album uh, came out, I think it was in 2005, it was somewhere in the mid 2000s. And they toured all the way for, you know, in, in several instances, all the way from 1993, all the way up until Alex Chilton actually uh, passed away. So, so they still kind of kept the big star thing going. Um, I'll show you a few other things that are, um, are of interest. Now, if for, as far as CDs go, you can find, I think it was put on Fantasy Records, you can find the first two big, big star albums on CD. It's a split, so it has number one record and a Radio City all on one disc, and you can usually find that pretty pretty easily. And for vinyl, number one record and Radio City have also been reissued, so you can also find those probably for under $15. And then third, I think there's a reissue of that one that I've seen. I forgot if it's on Four Men with Beards or whatever, but you can also shell out some bucks and find that box set which is which is killer uh, a few years back um there was a box set that came out that kind of combined a lot of rarities alternative alternate mixes demos from the third session which are just incredible because there is a version of because they covered uh femme fatale by the velvet underground and there's a great just acoustic version of that on there just some that the demos for me are, are where it's at and it also has a live show on it from Lafayette's music room in Memphis which interestingly enough has a, a Flying Burrito Brothers cover of Hot Burrito number no. two which is great so this is Keep an Eye on the Sky and this is put out by Rhino so it's a four disc set um, the discs I have taken out out of it but it's cool it opens up it has the pictures of each band members and then you open it up and it has uh, this nice paisley print with pouches for the CDs and then it has a uh, just a really nice booklet and Big Star was actually the name was actually taken from a 
a grocery store in Memphis that I think was actually across the street from from where they were uh, from where they recorded. So that's also really a great pickup if you can find that box set as well. Really sounds great. And like I said, there's a lot of um, it has all the albums on it and it has a lot of uh, various mixes and, and stuff like that. So when my band Audra, when we were recording our last album, Everything Changes, I think it was in 2008, uh, we recorded at Robin Wilson's uh, studio. Robin Wilson is the singer of the Gin Blossoms. And we were talking in the studio one day because he stopped in and he um, actually contributed some backing vocals on a couple songs on our album. But we were talking about Big Star because they recorded actually their first album, New Miserable Experience, at Art End Studios, the same place where uh, Big Star recorded. And uh, he said, if you don't have Chris Bell's album, you need to go out and definitely check that out. So I got it right away. Um, and this is Chris Bell's album. He only released one single before he died. So the rest of the material came out, I think in 92, by Ryko. And... Uh, the, the, the single that came out, I don't have, well, I'd love to have it, but it's I Am The Cosmos, and I think it's backed with um, You And Your Sister, which is which is great. Um, I know I was talking to some, um, maybe it was Raul on the, uh, in the VC, and I was uh, recommending this. I can't recommend this is enough. This is Chris Bell. Uh, if, you need to, if you're gonna check out three songs from Chris Bell, I Am The Cosmos, Speed Of Sound, You And Your Sister, and even look up also great so great so um, excellent excellent and yeah for sure uh, a couple more things so oh and that's a box top record that was Alex Chilton's uh, pre uh, pre big star band and let me see if there's actually something else oh yeah I'll show you this too while I got it here last year um, Omnivore the same person the same label that put out that uh, big that box set they released the 1970 sessions by Alex Chilton, which is uh, in between box tops and big star where he was kind of kind of finding his feet as far as songwriting. And they put out this uh, really uh, cool release of his material pre big star where you kind of, you know, you can kind of hear him feeling his way of what style he's going for. There's an incredible song in here called the EMI song, Smile For Me. And there's also a cover of uh, the Stones Jumpin' Jack Flash on here. But look at that beautiful picture on there, and uh, so this should be this is readily available. You got that nice picture of Alex Chilton there, and then it's on clear vinyl. So definitely check that one out if you're not familiar with it. Okay, I just have a couple more things I want to show you guys, and then I will send you on your way. <laughs> uh, this is another single I picked up a while back, and this was. There was a, a live album that came out, I don't know what, if it was in the 90s, called Nobody Can Dance. And it was, at some point, oh, well, it was actually in 1974, so I think Alex Chilton and Jody Stevens were the only remaining members, and a guy named John Lightman played bass. But this is a seven inch for September Girls. It was, a, it was in the rehearsals. And then there's a live version of The Letter, which is the uh, box, box top song. So it's out on Norton Records. Thought that was kind of cool. I picked this up, I don't know, a while back. And then one more thing to show you. So for Christmas, my girlfriend kindly got me this, which is very cool. In addition to getting me a Big Star shirt, which I'll, I'm sure I'll be wearing in an upcoming video. Um, this, this she picked me up this nice seven inch Big Star. It's the, it was recorded at the tribute concert for Alex Chilton and uh, it was with a guy named John Davis, I believe sang. So it's got the two guys from the Posies you can see. And then on the back, it's uh, signed by Jody Stevens, the only uh, remaining member of Big Star. So, so excited to get that. Thanks, Julie. I'm just so happy to have this in my collection. I'll show you the, the seven inch here. It's got a nice um, custom label on that one. And the songs on here are In the Street, don't lie to me and one my babies beside me which were the which were the singles from the album so very cool to have that and Jody Stevens even drew a little star on there look at that drum kit there very cool so I think that about wraps it up I'm a huge big star fan I I, I think they're just just phenomenal uh, they were phenomenal songwriters uh, um, Alex Chilton went on to have a pretty a varied solo career. He, he produced a lot of people. I know he produced The Cramps and um, 
I think it was the song the Lord taught us, I think he produced. And um, just had a really varied career. Um, lots of lots of experimental music and stuff and uh, just a really interesting or interesting career. And as you know, he's probably he sang on a replacements record and they even actually in tribute to Alex Chilton back on uh, the Please to Meet Me album. They actually had a song called Alex Chilton. So that wraps it up then for this edition of Friday on the Turntable. I'd like to uh, thank you guys for watching and for uh, subscribing. Uh, looking forward to making a lot, of, a lot of videos here in the new year. So thank you guys for all your support and I'll talk to you later.